is the beginning of the new work week, we continue to encourage you to take the necessary precautions to protect yourselves and families as we tackle the COVID-19 pandemic. When in public, remember to always wear a face mask, practice social distancing, and wash or sanitize your hands frequently. Welcome to InfoHub from Monday, August 24. Thank you for joining us. Ministers and other officials of the PPPC government continue to work towards the development of the country and have been busy over the past weekend and today. In this first report, we tell you that the PPPC government is working to recover millions of dollars invested by Guyanese in a Ponzi scheme and will also be conducting comprehensive investigations into the matter of electoral fraud. These and other matters were addressed by Attorney General and Minister of Legal Affairs, the Honorable Anil Nandlal, during a recent media briefing. An investigation has been launched into an alleged Ponzi scheme affecting thousands of Ghanis after numerous complaints were received concerning the operations of the financial outfit known as Accelerated Capital Form Inc., located on the east coast of Demerara. Attorney General and Minister of Legal Affairs, the Honorable Anil Nandalal, announced that the PPC administration is working to recover the approximately U.S. $20 million invested into the scheme. The government of Guyana wishes to assure that our main priority is to ensure that if this scheme is unlawful, and from all indications it is unlawful, that our main priority is to ensure that the persons who have put money in this scheme are reimbursed. And we ask members of the public or persons who are implicated or who have invested their monies in this scheme to come forward and assist the police with, the, with their investigations. And we also have to uh, build a database of persons who have invested and the amount of money that they have invested so that they can be reimbursed if possible. Electoral fraud conducted during the March 2 general and regional elections will be comprehensively investigated to determine who are the persons behind what took place. The two agencies that will be responsible for the inquiry are the Guyana Police Force, which is the investigative arm of the state, and the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions, DPP. So that the people of Guyana must understand and must know what transpired and who were the intellectual authors as well as the actual perpetrators of the wrongs that the world saw that took place. The Attorney General also addressed the issue of hundreds of millions of dollars in private retainer contracts spent by the former APNU ASC administration. The case is paid by taxpayers amounts to over $50 million and according to the AG, a forensic audit will be conducted on each of the invoices and financial information. Once the monies were wrongly paid, then the state has a responsibility to the taxpayers to take such steps that are necessary under the law to have the taxpayers' dollars reimbursed and recovered. And, 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 and the Attorney General is equipped to take such steps in the civil courts at least, and if um, criminal conduct is unearthed in the investigation, well, then the police will have to be invited to investigate. But certainly at the level of, um, of, of, of civil remedies, those will be pursued. Meanwhile, the PPC government is working to ensure two projects the previous administration failed to execute, a U.S. $8 million project dealing with the overcrowding of prisons and the establishment of a law reform commission, are not pulled by the Inter-American Development Bank. A.G. Nandala said the government will be moving swiftly to get these projects up and running. Nearly $100 million of taxpayers' money from since 2017 have been expended and the commissioners to the commission has not yet been appointed. And this is a, um, an IADB project and the people indicated that they are prepared to pull the project unless we move swiftly on it. So we will begin to move quickly to establish this commission to appoint commissioners. And finally, Minister Nandalal said 
that while the government will dismantle the state asset recovery agency, SARO, the lives and economic well-being of lower staff members are being considered. The agency, which falls under the Ministry of Legal Affairs, was established by the former administration to recover state assets in 2017. Sinico Thorne, InfoHub. As new positive COVID-19 cases are reported daily, it highlights that hundreds of cases had gone undetected for months. Minister of Health Dr. Frank Anthony in an interview on Saturday spoke to the issue while highlighting that his ministry has standardized treatment protocols in response to the pandemic. An update from the Ministry of Health on Sunday indicated that confirmed cases were at 955. This means that 458 new cases have been reported since August 4, 2020. Minister of Health, the Honorable Dr. Frank Anthony, explained that he expects more new cases to be confirmed in days to come. It is going to go up more because as we increase the amounts of tests that we are doing, we are going to see more positives, right? Um, in the past, testing was very restricted. There was very strict criteria on when you will do the test. And therefore, um, if, you, if the test was only available after you get symptoms, you know, there's almost, you, you'll have a clinical picture that this person is presenting with COVID and then you do the test. So Added to this, he noted that previously less testing was done because there were limited test kits. The PPPC administration, upon assuming office, has managed to garner test kits from various donor agencies, countries, and organizations to support Guyana's push to identify and contain the spread of COVID-19. With this huge demand for more tests, the ministry is working assiduously to build testing capacity and have more test samples processed daily. The testing that we are doing is using PCR, so that's a diagnostic test. Uh, we want to expand that capacity at the National Reference Lab and we are looking at another site outside of the reference lab where we can have another facility. But at the National Reference Lab, as you rightly said, we have, with the use of the current machine, uh, we are trying to get them to do more with the current machine. And that is why we have introduced the three shifts. The minister also told DPI that the ministry is working on many fronts to mitigate the high number of positive cases being identified daily. He said as more testing is being done and new cases are being reported daily, preparations are being made to treat positive cases. I don't want people to be alarmed, but we are going to see more uh, positives as the day goes by. Now, we need to prepare. One of the things that we did last week was to standardize our treatment protocol for COVID-19 patients. Uh, because we had a, a technical clinical working group and um, these comprise of doctors from the Georgetown hospitals and other hospitals and, and they were able to put together what would be our national treatment protocol for COVID-19. Uh, this week we will be rolling out um, a training for our doctors and the medical council would be accrediting those doctors. Beginning from the point of screening at all hospitals, the protocol guideline will ensure that persons visiting health facilities for treatment outside of COVID-19 are protected. For InfoHub, Delicia Haynes. The Department of Public Service is set to undergo a number of changes in keeping with the new PPPC government's vision for professional service as it reverts to a Ministry of Public Service. Minister of Public Service Honorable Sonia Parag during a virtual press conference on Monday expressed that she is currently working to reform the public service. The minister said based on a two-week assessment a number of inefficiencies have been found. What I have observed in the last two weeks is basically that the ministry has been running on very low human resource skills. What I've also noticed is that, for example, processing time, 
prevents the efficiency and expediency within which things can be done in the public service. Those are those were my first observations, and those were the things that I believe that I need to change immediately. To remedy the problem, Minister Parag will be implementing a code of ethics and conduct for public servants. The first thing is we will implement a code of ethics and a code of conduct. Not only will we do that, but we will also do a periodic evaluation on public servants. That will tell us their level of performance in their job description. It will allow us to be able to uh, inform them where they are lapsing and also of course the code of ethics and code of conduct will allow them to uh, interact or interface with the public in such a way that the public will walk away feeling like they've just been professionally dealt with during the past two weeks the minister also found that the scholarship system under the department of public service to be heavily flawed something which she outlined is far from her government's vision the system that we have for vetting scholarships, that system is heavily flawed. It is heavily flawed. This is what I have personally observed. And it, that is something that I plan to review and I plan to change. The PPPC government has always said it's going to be fair, it's going to be transparent to Guyanese, and that is what we plan to do. Minister Parag reported that 684 scholarships have been tendered to continuing students in Guyana and overseas as of August 12, 2020. For scholarship students overseas, she said that the ministry is providing additional assistance for them during the COVID-19 pandemic. In addition to giving them the stipend or providing them with the stipend as the, as the ministry usually does, we are also providing aid in terms of food hampers. We're also allowing persons, as such as, a, for example, Cuba. Cuba, there are different stores in which commodities are only available in some stores where U.S. dollars are being used. We are providing other measures in place whereby they can access that uh, through their card or so on to access from those stores via U.S. dollars, their commodities. So we are, they are being taken care of and Ever so often, we are providing hampers for them to sustain them. Moreover, as the ministry progresses, so will its digital presence. We are currently looking to upgrade so that some of the processes whereby you would have had an in-person coming into the, to the ministry and dealing with the ministry can be done online, making that process a little bit more expedient and efficient. And we want to first deal with the ministry and then seek to have that across the board. Minister Parag is also currently working on placement for students who have completed their studies and a policy to convert contract workers under the ministry to fixed establishment. The Department of Public Service, which currently falls under the office of the president, is being reverted to the Ministry of Public Service. The Department of Public Service, as it is now, comes under the Ministry of Presidency, as we all know but it's being reverted back to an independent ministry, which will be the Ministry of Public Service. And under that, it will house three programs on its command, and those will be policy development and administration, human resource development, and human resource management. Minister Parag reiterated that under her command, the ministry will be one that embodies professionalism, innovation, and ethics. The Public Service Ministry is committed under my command to fostering a professional public service instilled with and committed to culture of excellence by driving change and innovation, facilitating continuous professional development, implementing administrative reforms, creating conditions for conducive work environments, promoting and maintaining ethics and accountability in the functioning of government agencies delivering service to the public. For InfoHub, Akishi Budi.
The government will inject some $600 million into the Guyana Sugar Corporation, Gaisuko, to assist with wages and salaries for employees. Minister of Agriculture, Honorable Zulfikar Mustafa, on Sunday, relayed to the Department of Public Information that a sum of $120 million is required weekly to fulfill the payments of salaries. Previously, it was reported that due to the financial state of the entity, the corporation will not be in a position to pay wages from the week ending August 21. Minister Mustafa said the move by the PPPC administration is in keeping with commitments made in its manifesto to revamp and reopen sugar estates closed under the previous APNU AFC government. The agri-minister confirmed that the sum was among others approved by cabinet and has received the green light by both president and vice president of the Cooperative Republic of Guyana, His Excellency Dr. Mohamed Irfan Ali and Dr. Bharat Jagdio, respectively. More news after this short break. Stay with us. Daddy! Welcome back. Minister of Labor, Honorable Joseph Hamilton, wants the Ghana Telephone and Telegraph Company and the Ghana Postal and Telecommunications Workers Union to resolve their issues so that workers can benefit within the shortest possible time. The minister on Monday met with representatives of the Ghana Postal and Telecommunications Workers Union, including its president, Harold Shepard. Speaking with InfoHub on the sidelines of the meeting, Mr. Shepard revealed that in March this year, the union met with GTT, where they were informed that the company intended to wind up the pension scheme, effective May 1, 2020. Our position is that we would have requested detailed documentation from GT&T surrounding the entire issue. The company has failed to date to provide us with the necessary information, financial information related to the pension scheme in terms of um, the value of the pension scheme, the actual report of the pension scheme, in terms of how many members are, are in the pension scheme of gt and so we can make an informed decision to advise our membership. Shepard said GTT's failure led to the union approaching the Ministry of Labor for conciliation. Minister Hamilton said that he has proposed to both parties a meeting once there is nothing procedurally or legally impeding him from doing so. The people who are most important in everything that are happening are the employees. And both of them, they must pay attention to that. Uh, as I understand it already, many persons have left this world who are beneficiaries. And I suspect if this is not resolved expeditiously. Many other persons are going to leave here. So the question is, if we continue, how does it benefit the people who are beneficiaries? The Labour Minister last week met representatives of GTT on the issues between the two. He expressed the hope that the matter is resolved so that the beneficiaries get what belongs to them at the earliest opportunity. Minister of Home Affairs Honorable Robson Ben made an impromptu visit on Saturday, August 22, 2020, to the Lusignan prison where he saw firsthand the Holding Bay, the burnt Lusignan prison, and the COVID-19 isolation facility. The minister was accompanied by the Director of Prisons, Gladwin Samuels, DSM, Assistant Director of Prisons, Kevin Pilgrim, and other senior officers of the Ghana Prison Service. Engineers from the Ministry of Home Affairs and the Ghana Prison Service, as well as other staff from the ministry, comprised the team. The Home Affairs Minister was briefed by the Director of Prisons and by the officer in charge of the Holding Bay, Senior Superintendent of Prisons Acting, Diaraj Gayandat, on the administration of the prison population, security challenges, COVID-19 initiatives, among other pertinent issues. Some recommendations for meeting some of the challenges were discussed. High on the agenda will be the construction of additional areas so that social distancing can be practiced and better supervision and management of the prisoners can be conducted. The prison directorate and engineers were also tasked with detailing the development plans for the Lusignan location. The minister expressed his concern that the conditions he observed were very unsatisfactory. Minister Ben committed to working with all concerned to bring measurable improvements not only to Lusignan but also to the Georgetown, Mazaruni, New Amsterdam and to Mary prisons on a timely basis. 
Remember to do your part to ensure you do not put yourself at risk during this time. If you have a cough, fever and difficulty breathing, seek medical care early, but call the hotline first. That's all for today. Connect with us on all our social media platforms, including Facebook, YouTube and Instagram, and visit our website, dpi.gov.gy, as we bring you the latest and important news on what the government is doing to ensure the continued development of our country. Your Bridge Reports are up next. Goodbye.